Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about acid reflux. So if you like to watch more, then please subscribe and recommend to your friends and family. And thank you again so much for watching my channel. Okay, today we're going to talk about one of the most commonest condition. Almost all of us has suffered from it sometime in our lifetime. After having a hefty, spicy meal, a big meal, or a very rich meal, having too much alcohol, etc. We have all felt having a burning in the back of our chest or in the throat or in the top of our tummy, foul tasting food and fluid coming to the back of our throat, a condition some of us call indigestion, some of us call it acid reflux. Whether we are young, old, tall, short, man or a woman, we have all felt these symptoms once in our lifetime. However, there are some individuals out there who get these symptoms day and night, night and day, whether they have eaten anything rich or not, whether they drunk alcohol or not, they get it all the time. It is seriously affects their quality of life. Then it becomes a disease, and that disease is called GERD or GORD. Both stand for the same thing, slightly different spelling, gastroesophageal reflux disease. So today in this video, we're going to talk about what causes gastroesophageal reflux disease, what are the symptoms of this disease, how it's investigated, how it's diagnosed, and what is the treatment for it. Okay, what causes gastroesophageal reflux disease? What causes is the acid coming up from the stomach into our gullet and into the back of our throat. Where does the acid come from? So there are two main sources of acid in our stomach. One of the main sources is the stomach produces acid, which is hydrochloric acid. It's not a very strong acid, but does its job. And what is the job of acid in the stomach? First thing it does, it breaks down proteins into smaller particles. Second thing it does, it helps us digest certain substances like iron. Third thing it does, it kills many bacteria in our food, hence protecting our body from infection. The second source of acid in our stomach is when we eat or drink acidic food and acidic drinks. When this acid stays in the stomach, it does not cause us any bother and life goes on as normal. However, when this acid starts coming up, into our food pipe, which is the esophagus, or to the back of our throat, is that when we get symptoms. So why don't we get symptoms when the acid is in the stomach? And why do we get symptoms when acid leaves our stomach and comes up into the bottom of our gullet or into our throat? One of the reasons is that stomach has got special cells which produce a substance which lines the inside of the stomach. It's like having a coat of paint protecting the plaster work inside the house. So that substance which is produced inside the lining of the stomach protects the stomach against its own acid. So it does not let its own acid damage the stomach. However, such protective lining is not present in our throat or in our food pipe. So when the acid leaves the stomach and cups into the esophagus, then it starts causing the damage. What causes the acid to come up? In a normal person, between the gullet and the stomach, or the food pipe in the stomach, there is a tight pinching valve uh, like structure which stops the acid coming up. However, in many people, it's not an uncommon condition, it's quite common condition. Maybe one in three, maybe one in four people have this condition. But not everyone gets symptoms from it or get problems from it in which the valve between the gullet and the stomach is very loose. Now, at many of these people, we call it hiatus hernia. Now, what is a hiatus hernia? That is something I will uh, describe a wee bit further in my next video. Just to remember that one of the things that can cause reflux is a hiatus hernia. It is very important to understand that not every person with a hiatus hernia gets acid reflux. And also, every
anyone who gets acid reflux does not necessarily have a hiatus hernia. So acid reflux can happen without the hiatus hernia and acid reflux might not happen even when the hiatus hernia is present. However, most people who get acid reflux have a hiatus hernia. So what are the symptoms of acid reflux? What does a patient complain of? The first thing we talked about is they get burning sensation in the back of the breastbone. They get burning sensation in the upper part of their tummy. They get burning sensation in the back of the throat and in their mouth. Sometimes the enamel of the teeth gets damaged. They get sore throat all the time. Some people get chronic cough, tickly cough. Some people get this feeling that there is a hairball stuck in the back of the throat they want to clear all the time. And all are these symptoms which indicate that they have acid reflux. Now, how can reflux be diagnosed? There are a few tests which are available. They are available in most centers, how to diagnose acid reflux. One is endoscopy. So when a doctor thinks the patient has got symptoms of acid reflux, the patient is referred for an endoscopy, which is camera of the stomach, which I've shown in one of my old videos, the picture of it. And the camera goes down and the endoscopist can pick up a hiatus hernia or a loose valve between the gullet and the stomach. And they can also sometimes see damage from reflux, like an inflamed esophagus or scarring of the esophagus. And that is all indicative of acid reflux. However, endoscopy can see the telltale signs of acid reflux, cannot definitely diagnose acid reflux. If endoscopy is not possible, or if it is it inconclusive of acid reflux, then a barium x-ray can be done in which the patient drinks a dye or a contrast. X-rays are taken. Patient's body is tilted on a ta special table which goes up and down, sideways, backwards, head down, head up. And the X-ray doctor can see the barium coming up again into the back of the throat and the esophagus and also can see a hiatus hernia, hence confirming acid reflux. There are other specialized tests available in which a probe can be put into the back of the nose, into the lower end of the gullet, which is a sensor to pick up acid reflux. And these are the three main tests which are generally used to confirm or rule out acid reflux. So what is the treatment for acid reflux? Now, as I said earlier in the video that one of the causes of acid in the stomach is what we eat or drink. And the main treatment for most people who suffers from off and on acid reflux, like myself, who will on and off suffer from acid reflux, not all the time, is to change what we eat and drink. So overindulgence indulgence in alcohol, tea, coffee, spicy food, tomatoes, onions, garlic, reduction of all these things will improve symptoms. Besides changing what we eat, there are certain tablets also available. If reducing the amount of food and drinks that contain too much acid, reducing it does not improve our symptoms completely. Then there are some antacid tablets available. Some of them can be bought over the counter. And these tablets, the way they mainly work is either they dilute our acid or neutralize our acid, or they make a coating inside the lining of our gullet and our stomach, which protects the gullet and the stomach from the damage from the acid. Now, the effect of these tablets or these liquids is only temporary, lasts for an hour or two while the coating is there and once it's gone, the symptoms do tend to come back. However, there are tablets available which can actually reduce the amount of acid produced from the stomach. And the two main classes of tablets available, the most commonly used tablets are called proton pump inhibitors. There are many varieties of these and I'm not going to promote any particular name or any particular variety. Um, they are very effective. I take them sometimes as well, and they do improve my reflux symptoms. The second type of tablet, which is not perhaps as strong as proton pump inhibitors, but again will help with fewer side effects and can be taken long term, are called H2 antagonist 
these tablets are available over the counter and over prescription, certainly in UK and I'm sure elsewhere in the world as well. And they will also improve the symptoms of reflux. All these tablets are reasonably safe. And I, I say reasonably safe to take long term without any serious side effects. Every tablet has got side effects, but no serious side effects um, are usually present with these tablets. There will be a small number of patients in whom uh, tablets will not work, change of diet will not work, and these patients will require some sort of surgical treatment to stop their reflux. These anti-reflux operations should not be taken lightly. Not every person with a hiatus hernia or with reflux is a candidate for surgery or should have surgery because these operations are complex operations. They can be done through a keyhole. They can sometimes be done in few centers with an endoscope. However, these all have side effects, these operations, and some of the side effects can be much worse than the actual reflux itself.